Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. You know that we like to keep up with what's going on in our school district. That's why Melinda Colton is here. She is the Director of Communications for the Park City School District. Hello. Good morning. So what is going on at the district right now? <laughs> Tell us. We want to know. Well, the good news is we have Thursday and Friday off. Our, we have no classes, so it is That's fall right. recess. So yeah. It really gives us a chance to kind of, I think, rejuvenate and kind of refill our souls as we continue the rest of this this yeah. semester. Um, one of the great things that's going on right now is this week and next week we have what is called National Safe Schools Week. Okay. It's actually this week and we've decided to extend it into next week because we have that break that's this Thursday and Friday. Oh, that's nice. So yeah. it's really a chance for us to be looking at what are some ways we can improve on some things. A lot of different things are going on. Safe and healthy is still our main focus this year. Okay. Um, today starting at 3 o'clock we want to remind parents and students that the SWAT teams from the county and the city and the fire will be at Park City High School and they will be doing a drill. Right. Which is great news for us. It helps them understand the layout of the high school and also to actually train there helps them become better prepared should we ever have any kind of a emergency situation there. Sure, but it also helps to kind of see what it's like when there are kids attending school. Uh, Correct. Young people there. Correct. Because it's a lot different if you go into an empty building. Yes. That's not the same thing as when there's classes and students and things like that, right? Correct. But it's just not really feasible to yeah. do that, <laughs> to have students in there while this is going on. Well, so this is not so, when there are students there, though. Okay. This is correct. Yeah. So yeah. This, is from, this is from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock oh, okay. tonight. And so it really it helps them determine layouts and, and where people can hide and those kinds of things. Okay. Um, later in December, we will do a table top exercise drill with our law enforcement agencies where we really have a chance to sit down and have a scenario and then determine the best way to approach that. All of those kinds of things are incredibly helpful and just help us become more and more prepared. Now, will there be teachers involved in this? Or will they, they won't be involved yet either. So Correct. when will that happen, when they'll have an idea of what uh, they're what they're asked to do mm -hmm. in the case of an emergency as well because that's part of obviously mm -hmm. anything is. is when we lock down the school the teachers need to know you go in the room you lock the door if there's a window you cover the window I mean are we talking about that stuff too uh, always in fact we have specific protocols emergency protocols that our teachers know that they're to follow we mm -hmm. have continual drills with students that involve teachers to make sure everyone's accounted for um, one of the things that I really want to let people know about is that safety is huge on our school board's mind right now. In fact, it's a huge priority. And so they've just earmarked $3 million to go out. And as people will be seeing, we're looking at including fences at all of our elementary mm -hmm. schools. That is not without controversy. Yeah, um, we like our open space here. But in this day and age, in the year 2017, it is just something that Homeland Security, um, research after research tells us how important it is to be able to have those gates locked during the day so that people cannot just walk onto our fields and walk into our buildings. So in conjunction with our buildings, we're also redesigning all of the front offices and our protocols will be changing. So parents right now can pretty much walk into any school. But once this is done, they'll actually have to go through the office to get into the school. Correct. correct? And they'll have to show an ID so that we also no, can check that. I think that's super that. important. I think it's incredibly important. That's yeah. all, every bit as important as, as the fence aspect. So those things, I think, will really begin to help as we have what's called this visitor management system so that we know who is in our school and we know when they're leaving. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just really excited that that's a priority right now for I our mean, board. I mean, to be blunt, it means you've got to come through us to get in the school. Correct. Which, uh, at the end of the day, um, um, that puts teachers in a, uh, well, it puts administration right. in a, a little bit of a, a higher risk situation, but at the same time, that's who we want at the higher risk, to be blunt, right. uh, more than the children, right? Right. And, and we aren't saying that we don't want parents to come in of and help not. and volunteer. We encourage that. But it is going to be a little bit inconvenient for the first few months as people get used to it. Right. And hopefully we'll get it down and it'll be pretty a pretty smooth transition. And we hope that, that our parents and our community will support us in doing that. I can't see why they would and at the end of the day, it just adds a layer of safety, which is critical, I think. I think, I think so, too, in this day and age. As, yeah. as you look at just across the country, violence is becoming more and more an issue, and it's just something
something that we really haven't had to worry about too much here. And I think it's something that I, I'm really happy to know that the board is taking it seriously. Well, the big thing, obviously, that it also speaks to is mental health in this country, right? Mm -hmm. And that is another thing that you guys have uh, put a lot of consideration to, right? We have. Just yesterday, we did a partnership with Connect Summit County mm -hmm. and had Randy Silverman come and talk at large to the community about youth mental illness. And I was so impressed. She really is one of the national voices on this, having had a child that went right. through this. And so we had an incredible turnout, close to 100 people there. And she gave a lot of really good information about warning signs and things like that to look for. So as a district, incredibly helpful information. And even as a mom, I found it to be really helpful for me to know what those warning signs are I need to be looking for. Well, as always, we appreciate the update on what's going on and look forward to the next time we can talk about it mm -hmm. uh, as well and see what uh, right. else the district is up to. In finality, what mm -hmm. can we as parents do? Uh, obviously, we want to support these changes, but is there anything else that we can do going into this uh, next part of the school year as we take this quick break? Right. I think be patient with this because they're going to start to see some construction immediately in those offices. It's going to be loud. It's going to be noisy. It's going to sure. be inconvenient once those protocols get in place. But um, be patient with us and realize that the only reason we're doing it is for the safety of their own children. That's excellent. Thanks, as okay. always. Uh, Thank certainly you. certainly appreciate having you here. Melinda Colton, uh, Director of Communications for the Park City School District. Much more to come here as we uh, continue our program right here on Park City Television.